Very well, then. I see you have made up your mind. Hello, this is H.G. Bailey, and I've made up my mind to have boss time! I'm about to play Bravely Default against Master Kami Azumi himself. Okay, so this fight is actually pretty dangerous. Probably the most dangerous of all the Asterisk refights because he can counterattack several times in a single round, depending on what he does. So being able to boost my BP is actually almost a detriment, because if I attack him several times in a round, he will kill you with all of his counterattacks there. So I kind of have to hold my punches, or pull my punches a little bit, so that I can make sure that I'll be able to, well, survive what happens. So let's see, let's go with Rampart, and let's see, I forgot to equip the Blood Blade, but that's fine, we'll just get that going. I'm not even going to bother, uh, what was it? Yeah, 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 let's actually, uh, buff up here a little more. I'm not even going to bother, like, trying to debuff his attack, because the multipliers on his damage whenever he's counterattacking are just obscenely high. Now, the only thing I really cared to steal from him there was the Kikuichi Manji, because they sell for pretty good money. I already have one from the pool. But, I want to have more money so I can fill out my inventory. Eventually, that is. So now, I basically don't want to attack Kami Azumi more than once per round. I'm going to have to have Tiz default because, well, well, you know what? If it's just Tiz, I think we'll be fine. It, uh, he might not even counterattack Tiz at all. Who knows? But chances are he will, and counterattack and kill him. But, well, maybe he'll use like a weaker counter, or something like that, or before swine, or something that I really don't care about that much. Okay, so let's see. Well, you know what? Yeah, let's go with curse, just in case. Okay, so we'll go with... Actually, hold on. Ring of Bell's got all the really good up. So, yeah, let's reduce his attack. Uh, hold on. Then, we'll attack with Earthquake there, and then set up Rampart after he pierces with the, my attack with the count, or with his counter attack or whatever he's doing. So, okay, let's see. Yeah, pressure point. We're only gonna attack him once per character. Okay, before Swine, that counters magical attacks, if I recall correctly, but... Uh, damage, damage, that is. So, we should be fine otherwise. Maybe I don't need uh, Agnes to do that full amount every round, but... Well, we'll see. We'll stay on top of that. Let's see. Maybe we should just go with a couple poisons there. And then do that. Yeah, that ought to be good. Okay, and then, let's see, yeah, let's go with the Earthquake there, and a single Rampart to set, set, set things up again, and yeah, just use all of our attacks that pierce magic defense. Okay, I'm getting pretty lucky with his counters here. Uh, one of the counter attacks that he can use is Nothing Ventured, and if you attack him like three or four times with that, he will counter attack for massive damage each time, not to mention... He can... Uh, what is that? Yeah, Nothing Ventured cuts the damage he'll take from your physical attack by 50%. Okay, so the next round I'm gonna have to have Ring a Bell... Yeah, I'm gonna have to go charge up as much BP as I can, but that'll be fine. But yeah, I'm gonna have him use Rampart first before he attacks. And then I'll use an Earthquake, and then I'll use another Rampart afterwards, since I really have nothing better to do. And I might well, I want to make sure that I've got Rampart up on everyone, or at least as many characters as possible, by the end of the round. Uh-oh! Looks like he's going into Pissy Boss Mode! And he's going on the offense. Fortunately, his regular physical attacks aren't nearly as problematic, but... Alright! Got it. Easy enough. 
could use the JP and the Masamune, but I think I already got one of those before. So I think we're fine. <laughs> and he dies. Master! <laughs> well fought. I underestimated your conviction. Are you gonna take forever to die? Will you hear your master out one last time, Adia? What do you mean by underestimating her conviction? Of course. I mean, what, did you think she was gonna back down when she was on the brink of death? You guys didn't! Take the time to speak with your father properly. If you do not, I see nothing but tragedy for you both. Well, that's what happened the last time, though I wouldn't exactly call it tragic. And this petty dissent between father and child. Uh, this isn't petty dissent. This is about saving the world and saving lives, dude. Master. You two were always so difficult. Master. Boy, way to pick your last words there, huh, Kamiyazumi? But you know, you'd think there'd be, of all the asterisk bearers that we fight, you'd think there'd be one of them who was a total coward or something, and when we get them, like, on the brink of death, they'll be like, okay, okay, I, I give up, or try to run away, or give us some... Remotely useful information! Like, I mean, okay, okay, I'll actually try to explain my actions now for real, or try to be on the level with you guys or something. Yeah, but nothing. Not one of them. I, of all people, you'd think the thief would be more of a cowardly one. Although, he didn't exactly have the flee or escape command, like, uh, what is it, Final Fantasy V there. But, well, let's see what we can get out of the uh, items that I've been stealing from all these bosses this whole time. Let's see, I only need one heavy axe. Yeah, look at that money! Holy cow! Yeah, stealing all this stuff is totally worth it. Woo! Ho ho ho! Let's see, I'm still gonna hold on to the elemental rods there. But, let's see. Yeah, I'll hold on to an extra knife. Hmm, maybe I could start buying some... Uh, good equipment... Or, not good equipment, but just, like, one of each piece of equipment so I can... Well, actually put them to use. Or, well, have them for my collection, that is. Let's see, I also stole something else from Kamiyazumi there. Where is that? Ah, there it is. Rebuff lockets. Oh, wow. I'm surprised they sell for that amount. Not that I really need them anymore. We've got Lamia's tiaras, but... Well, I guess I could use them at some point. Now, I'm just gonna leave my setup the same for now. As we're heading to Eternia next. By the way, for this chapter, if you've already fought the Six Dragons in Chapter 4... And unlocked Vampire Castle, you do not have to fight them again. You could, and I will, but you don't have to. But yeah, the dragons respawn each chapter, so you could fight them again if you want. Uh, I am not going to actually show fighting them again on screen, though, because they are identical from chapter to chapter. They will, their stats are the same, their AI is the same, so there's really no point in showing that again. I mean, it's not like the other asterisk fights where you may, might get a little dialogue, or you might see, like, a little difference in their AI script, something that makes them a little trickier to fight than the first time, like with... Kamiyazumi there, things like that. But yeah, the dragons are 100% identical. Stats, AI script, everything. I mean, my approach would be a little different, but I'm basically just going to use the same setup that I've been using for most boss fights. Except, like, I might add a uh, status protection 
or something in there for the relevant dragon. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, right. Now, there are some people that have some other things to talk about here. Some new stuff. Oh, they already shut them down, huh? Okay, how's it going? This guy's new. Do you know the story of the two heroes of the Duchy of Eternia? No, I hadn't heard about that. It goes without saying that the first is Brave the Templar, Grand Marshal of the Eternian forces. Well, I wouldn't exactly call him a hero, but okay. The second is the Swordmaster, Nobutsuna Kami Izumi, greatest swordsman in the land of immortality. Not anymore. We are blessed to have not one, but two great heroes in a single generation. And what did they do that was so heroic? Hmm. You are the Templar's daughter, young lady? How did you... How does everyone know who she is? And you are a disciple of the Swordmaster. Well, I never... Well, something like that. Still... I'll wager you haven't heard the story of the one true love of the Templar and the Swordmaster. No, I don't think so, but I have a feeling you're going to tell me all about it, aren't you? All those my age know the tale. Ask me anything. Oh, uh, okay, sure, why not? Before he became a Templar, Brave Lee was a talented young student of the Orthodoxy from a rural village. Oh yeah, we heard about that, that graveyard, gravemark village, whatever it was called. His counterpart, the swordmaster Nobutsuna Kameizumi, was a top young swordsman at the city training hall. Oh, really? The two met here in the city and became fast friends as they trained together, honing both mind and sword arm. One day, the Templar returned to his home village accompanied by his friend, the Swordmaster. However, when they returned to the city, it was clear there had been a falling out between them. What do you mean? Both refused to speak of it. They also all but ceased training together in the way of the sword. Huh, I thought they were, like, real close buddies. Maybe that's a little different in this world. Word spread among the townspeople. We all had wondered what had happened between them. Let me guess. Booty! When the Templar later brought his betrothed from his home village to the city, the rumor started. Oh, sorry, spoiled that two seconds before the game says so. Had the Swordmaster and the Templar become rivals over this beautiful young girl? Well, did they? The Templar became a bishop of the Orthodoxy at a young age, while the Swordmaster stayed as assistant instructor at the training hall. Oh, okay. So were they heroes before they took over the Orthodoxy or overthrew them or whatever? The year before the Great Plague, ah. the two who had avoided each other so long suddenly engaged in a duel on the city outskirts. What? They fought for three days and nights in a constant flurry of sword blows, their clashing blades ringing throughout the city. How does that even work? I think you're just embellishing the story there. At my best guess, the Swordmaster won by a narrow margin. Well, yeah, you, all you have to do is just sit on his ass and let the guy attack him. In the end, it took a score of the Orthodoxy soldiers to stop the fighting. There is no doubt in my mind that the two of them fought day and night over the enchanting Mazer. Well, that didn't work out too well for Kamizumi, huh? It was an epic battle for all involved. So, who won? Afterwards, both were disciplined for taking part in the unsanctioned duel. The Swordmaster visited Mazer alone. Soon after returning to the city, he set off on a journey to train in the art of war. Wasn't he already doing that? Not long after, the Templar traveled to his village and brought his betrothed back with him. Ah! We all thought the Swordmaster had confessed his love and been spurned, leaving him broken-hearted. That's... The duel was most likely a deadly struggle to see who would have the chance to declare their love first. Oh, wasn't it a little late for that? Then the Great Plague descended. Amid the chaos, the Templar and Mazer were joined in marriage. 
I cannot recall how many years it was before the Swordmaster returned. Well, I guess he wasn't around for that, huh? He took part in the Templar's uprising that followed. Oh yeah, we heard a little about that. Who can say what was in his heart at the time? It is beyond the comprehension of simple folks such as I. Um, yeah, I guess. Well, that was pointless. Oh, really? Now, if you came here and talked to him, and then went to fight Kamiyazumi, I think you get a little slightly different dialogue, but you gotta do these events, like, in a different order, and, well, like I said, I don't want to show every single variation of every cutscene. That would take even longer than the game already is. <laughs> We're not even close to finishing this up, viewers. Well, sort of. You'll see. Oh, um, evidently. Oh. <laughs> you guys got a snow cone maker around here? Oh. Guess you don't really like the food where you're from, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> I like it when Anya smiles there when she's talking. Oh. Um. Okay. What does that even mean? Clean and spicy. Oh, okay, they actually do explain that. Okay, uh, uh, carry on! I knew you were going to explain it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. Well, I suppose Alternus might have had that food before being from here, although not. I'm still not really sure what's going on with Ring of Bell and Alternus, though. I mean, I've played the game before, I know what's going on, but, well, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys. I'm just going to leave you in suspense. But all right, let's pay a visit to uh, Mother Lee. Mother. Yeah, it's a bit of a pun. Yep, we're all gonna die. Or not. Well, you're all gonna die. We're gonna hightail it out of here once we're done. Oh, really? I wonder why. Hmm. Aww. Oh. Good for you. Not like you got anywhere else to go. Oh, I love the music here. If I ever go quiet for a while, viewers, I'm just listening to the music. Why, Adia, when did you return? Never mind that. Are you all right? Why wouldn't she be okay? Of course I am. You mustn't trust everything you hear. Oh, well, we've been hearing quite a lot lately. And I've been feeling quite a bit better since I came here. I am Adia's mother, Mazer Lee. Thank you for looking after my daughter. Hey, how's it going? So, you are the wind vessel? <gasps> you know, it shouldn't surprise me at this point in the plot that everyone knows who we are somehow. Even without photographs. I am the Grand Marshal's wife, after all. I hear much to which others are not privy. 
and I am particularly well informed about the Windvestal's traveling companions. Sir Alternus provides me with the latest news. Hmm, I like how Ringabell had kind of a reaction to Alternus being mentioned there. Mother. How wonderful to see you so full of vim and vigor. Well, yeah, being bloodthirsty for so long will do that to you. I'm... I'm sorry if I worried you, Mother. There's no need for that. There's no need to worry about me. It's time for your examination. <sighs> Forgive me, but this is where we must say goodbye. Please, do look after my daughter. I love that part of the music. Mother! But, yeah, we'll make sure she's okay. But if you talk to her again after talking to the gossip monger... Hello, Mother? We get a little more dialogue this time around. What is it, child? You look troubled. Oh, it's just... I've heard some things. About when father and my master were young. I see. I thought those rumors long buried. Ha uh ha. -huh. Is it true what they say? That father and my master dueled over you? No, that is not the case. Well, then, what's the story, then? They're both poor with words. They merely let their blades do the talking. That still sounds like a duel to me. For three days and nights? I suppose it can't be helped that people thought it was a duel. They said my master went to confess his love for you after he won. They have that wrong, too. Ah. I still remember the day he came to my village like it was yesterday. He walked up to my house and said, You must marry the Templar. Ah. Huh. He let me win, the scoundrel. <laughs> he looked furious. <laughs> it sounds like something he would say. <laughs> you only have eyes for the Templar. It must be you who tells that stubborn fool. <laughs> then... Your heart was father's from the beginning? Yes. Oh. I had been infatuated with him since we were children. That's just creepy. Soon after Sir Kami Izumi left the village, your father came. Then, he told me of his love. Oh, it was a joyous day. Oh. He and I were betrothed, and I moved to the city of Eternia. Sir Kami Izumi had already left on a journey to master the art of the sword. Oh, that upset your father greatly. Hmm, I wonder why. He hoped for his blessing more than any others. Oh, I was about to say, you're not going to tell us, are you? I have struck him down, Mother. Master. But yeah, you get a little uh, more dialogue here if you do it in this order. Yes, I had heard about Sir Kami Izumi. Your father's blood courses through your veins. And much of Sir Kami Izumi has rubbed off on you. <laughs> like them, you settle your problems with the blade. Well, this time we really did! Although I had her using the fist. That is something you can likely never change. <laughs> but remember, it is thanks to your master that we survived the Great Plague. It is? We would not be here if not for him. I am alive today, only because Sir Kami Izumi stood by your father when he needed aid. Oh, you mean overthrowing the orthodoxy? The same Kami Izumi who instilled the way of the sword within you. You must always be grateful for the gifts he has given you. Now and forevermore. Well, okay, but that doesn't justify his actions. <sighs> I know, Mother. Wait, do we get any different dialogue? No? No? Okay, that's all of it. Okay, yeah, now let's actually go to Attorney in Central Command. Now, when you're actually going there, uh, this time around, you can actually just take the, take Grand Ship straight there. Yeah, or to Southmore, I mean. You don't have to walk all the way there. There are some new enemies around Eternia, but if I recall correctly, I think they're identical to what you'd find in Central Command there. So, yeah, I'm just gonna 
take care of, or find, take care of finding them there. Now, even though you enter over here, or like I did, yeah, you end up going up the middle there anyway, somehow. How does it even work? You showed skill making it to our central command, Windbustle. What the? Ah, okay. Maybe they teleported us here. But unfortunately for you, you won't get any further if I can help it. That can be arranged. <laughs> I'll have you know I'm in top form today. Now you'll see just how helpless you are before me. I bid you, Victoria. Unleash your full power. Spare nothing. Well, I don't know if you'd want to go overboard like that. I wouldn't have it any other way. I'll have my fun then close in for the kill. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna brutally murder all of you! <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> Yay! No wait, wrong game. Flee if you can, wretches. Off you go! Blizzard fist! Game. Well, yeah, it is a bit cold out here. They're probably not used to Chicago weather like me. Enough! You'll only hurt yourself at this rate. Hm. You finally speak and it's out of concern for me. Hm. You need to learn your place, sniveling worms. What does that even mean? <laughs> you need to learn your place when we're trying to show concern for you? What? Ha ha! It happened! Victoria! Victoria! I can't Good! Alas, you have grown more unstable than I had feared! We must seek treatment at once! Ha uh ha! -huh. Well, that was pointless. But, alright, we made it inside, in one piece. Let's see, as far as my setup goes, do I still have... Okay, I've got the Thief Gloves going there. But, uh, yeah, let's get you back on the Blood Blade. I don't think I need to change anything here. I mean, I suppose you could go with the Divine Fists or some Holy Elemental weapons. Particularly against Victoria. But, uh, I wouldn't do that with... Uh, what is it? With Idea there. She's better, uh... I mean, yeah, that'll cut her attack power in half. More than half. A little more. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So, I wouldn't worry about exploiting an elemental weakness. We're at the point where we really don't need to worry about that anymore. But can we defeat the duo of Victor and Victoria once again? More powerful than ever? Find out next time on Let's Play Bravely Default. This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!